In today's video, I'm going to be restoring an old boat trailer and getting it ready for the mini jet boat project. I only paid $300 for this trailer and some of my friends are already questioning if it was a good deal or not. Well, I've got the trailer back behind the shop here. Let's go around, take a closer look at it and find out what I have gotten myself into. All right, so this is the trailer that I have purchased for the mini jet boat project. And I purchased it on Facebook Marketplace for $300. Mrs. Making Stuff actually found the trailer on Facebook Marketplace, but I believe this is gonna be the perfect trailer for my jet boat project. So let me give you a rundown as to why. First of all, this is a galvanized trailer. It is not aluminum and galvanized will work for where I'm at because the closest salt water is about 600 miles away and I don't think I'm going to be taking the mini jet boat into salt water. The trailer is also a bolt together trailer. Everything on it is bolted together so the axle is bolted to the frame. I've already moved it forward where I think it needs to be for the mini jet boat project. I have also moved the bunks as far forward as they can go. You can see here where it starts to bend here at the front of the trailer. I can't get it much closer to the front than this, but I think this is going to work out perfect with the adjustable axle and the adjustable bunks. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with the mini jet boat. And yes, I do plan on cutting this little three foot section off of the back once I get the boat on there and make sure everything's gonna fit. And I know some of you guys are going to tell me Leave it as long as you can because it will tow better, it will handle better, less of your truck will go in the water when you're on the boat ramp. And I just can't do that because the boat won't fit on the trailer. The nose would be way back here and I'd have this huge gap between the nose and the winch and the roller up here on the front. Now I did check on getting a longer piece of galvanized steel right here where the tongue is mounted to, to maybe extend it back this way some. And then I can move that roller and everything back. But that little piece of steel that, would, that was long enough to bring this back cost more than what I paid for this entire trailer. So I refuse to do that just to move this back maybe about two feet. All right, and I've showed you the good. Let me show you the ugly on the trailer. First, this strap is pretty much shot. It's starting to dry rot. I would not trust it to hold my boat while I'm going down the highway. Also, the wiring on this trailer is shot. It's gonna to need to be rewired. The carpet on the bunks is a little worn out, so I'm gonna to have to replace that. The tires, the tires are 17 years old. Yes, they are going to get replaced. I do not trust 17 year old trailer tires. I am shocked they are in as good a condition as they are being 17 years old. And then the last thing is the bearing seals. You can see right here, they are shot because the grease is flinging out on the inside of the hub here. So I'm gonna to have to replace the bearings and the seals on the trailer. And as I said earlier, the trailer is galvanized. There's no rust on the actual trailer, but here on the axle, there's a little bit of surface stress starting to form. So I'm going to take care of that while I'm working on the rest of the trailer. Okay, so it's been about six months since I filmed that last segment that you just saw, that overview of the trailer and everything that is wrong with it. And I kind of regret waiting that long because it is extremely hot out here now. But I am gonna start working on this trailer and I've already put new rubber on the rims. So I think what I'm gonna do next is replace the wheel bearings in those hubs. Okay, so this is why I am changing the bearings on this trailer. Uh, this is the back side of the hub and it actually looks worse than what I thought it would. But you can see here all of this caked on grease that's all dried up and just caked on here. 
This seal is definitely bad and it has been throwing or slinging grease out for quite some time. So it is a good thing that I decided to go ahead and replace the bearings on this trailer. Okay, so I got that bad seal removed. I also removed the bearing from each end of the hub assembly and the races are still in there. So I've got to get those out. And I want to show you this tool that I got from Harbor Freight. It's not sponsored. I paid for this tool myself, but it makes getting these bearing races inserted and removed much, much easier. So this is the Maddox bearing race and seal driver set. And like I said, this is not sponsored. I got this at Harbor Freight. I did pay for it myself. And this has a whole bunch of little discs. And if you see here, they are tapered, kind of cone shaped. And then there is a little flange right here on the end. And as you can see, you get a whole bunch of different sizes and a handle. And in the past, in order to get a bearing race out of the hub assembly, I would have to find a piece of pipe or a socket or something that is really close to that same diameter and then stick it down in there and then bang on it with a hammer to remove it or to insert it. This tool makes that much easier to do. So for me to remove that smaller race out of this hub assembly, I just find the correct size disc that I need and then I attach it to the handle. And then I just insert the handle into the opposite end of the hub assembly and just hit on a couple of times with a hammer. And it's just that easy. It just popped that race out of the other end of that hub. Now there is one caveat when using this tool to remove the races, it's only going to work for the small side. And that is because the diameter of this race is much bigger than the diameter of this opening on this side. So I cannot get that larger diameter tool down inside here to knock that race out. So I've got to do it the old fashioned way and I'm just going to use a punch. Okay, so I got the old races removed from the hub assembly. So it's time to clean that thing up and install the new bearings and races. And I'm going to be using this bearing, this trailer bearing kit that I got from my local Napa store. And I probably paid a little too much for it, but they were the only ones that had it in stock. Plus with it being local, I was able to just walk in the door and make sure that these old bearings were the correct size to fit inside this hub assembly. And here is where this tool comes in extremely handy and useful. And that is for inserting the new races into the hub assembly, because all I have to do is find the correct tapered disc to fit my bearing race like so. And now all I have to do is just insert it like this and then just tap it into place. All right, so I've got the new bearings packed with grease and they are installed inside the hub. I also installed the new seal using that same bearing and seal inserter remover tool from Harbor Freight. And the grease I have been using is a blue marine grease. And this is what I've been using, this Lucas marine grease. And this is specially designed for water usage for boats, jet skis, and boat trailers. Now it's time to just go back outside and install this onto the trailer. All right, one thing I like to do is tighten this nut down on here as tight as I can possibly get it. And what this does is it sets the bearings. It gets all the grease kind of pushed into place and the bearing pushed into place. And then I'll back it off a little bit. And let this spin freely and then set this finger tight like you're supposed to do. And then the final step is to just install the new cotter pin that came with the kit. And for right now, I have installed that dust cap that came with the bearing kit because I've got some bearing buddies on order and they haven't arrived yet, but don't worry because before this video is over, they will be delivered. All right, and I got the tire installed here. There is no play in that bearing whatsoever, no matter which way I try to wiggle the tire. And as you can see here, it spins freely. So that means I don't have that castle nut tightened too tight. I think this side's all done. All I need to do now is the other side and I'll be finished with the bearings.
So I just received a box from Amazon and inside were the bearing buddies. So these were delivered before the video as promised, but uh, these do take the place of the dust caps. And the way they work is you fill them full of grease with this Zerk fitting here, and this pressurizes the grease on the inside of the hub. And this does two things. One, it helps prevent water from entering in uh, the hub and ruining your bearings by getting the moisture inside there. And the other thing it does is it helps keep the bearings lubricated. So the way that this works is you just pop it on the hub in place of the dust cap, then you fill it full of grease, and then when it pressurizes with grease, this little blue ring just pops out like this, and then that lets you know that the bearing buddy has pressurized grease in there. And then this is also a little visual indicator, so over time you can just look at it and tell if uh, you need to put more grease in there to keep the pressure built up inside. And then they also come with their own little rubber dust cap to help keep all of this clean. All right, so you can see here that I have put the original dust cap back on this hub. That is because I either got a defective bearing buddy. You can see here how it is pushed in and not really working the way it's supposed to. I did have it on there. I put the grease gun on there and I tried to fill it with grease and it just stopped like the Zerk fitting was clogged. No matter what I tried, no grease would go through it. And it certainly wasn't pressurizing the inside and pushing that inner ring out. And then when I gave up, I tried to remove the Zerk fitting or the grease gun from the Zerk fitting and it would not let go to save my life. And now you can see it is messed up. So these are going back right now. I don't have a pretty good opinion of bearing buddies. I know some people swear by these things, but uh, I'm not impressed and these are going back for a refund. Okay, so next on my list was to put a new winch strap on the winch and I did order a new one, but I have decided not to do that now because this strap was definitely in pretty rotten shape. But as you can see here on this end, you can see all of this rust. If you look down here inside of the spindle, it is rusted out pretty bad and there's actually big chunks of that spindle coming off. So this doesn't cost that much. So I've decided to go ahead and just replace the winch altogether. And it's on order too, but don't worry because it will also be delivered before this video ends. Okay, so next on my list would be to do something with all of this wiring. You can see there are loose wires just everywhere all over this trailer. I did order a new wiring harness and this should just be plug and play so let's see how easy it is to hook this up and run the wire all through the insides of these tubes and out to all of the lights where they should go all right so i got this wiring harness all run through here last night but it got dark and i couldn't record with the gopro so it is actually the next day but you can see here i also replaced these rubber grommets that run throughout the trailer and the reason I replaced all these rubber grommets is I had to drill some new holes and the edges were kind of sharp and I was afraid that these wires would rub on here and it would scrape the insulation off this and eventually short out. I'm also waiting for some clips to arrive so I can mount this wire up underneath here where it doesn't hang down. And also I wanna take the opportunity here to show you guys some new connectors that I found. These work really great because they're like a butt connector, but they don't crimp. They actually have solder inside of them and they're heat shrink. So you just slide both ends of the wire in here, hit the heat shrink gun on there and that solder melts and you've got a pretty solid connection here, much better than a crimp connection. I purchased an assortment of those wire connectors on Amazon and I'll put links to these down in the description, but you can see here, it's just a piece of heat shrink tube with uh, a ring of solder in the center of it. And these things work great. I'm gonna be using this on the wiring harness on the boat and 
These could be used for lots of things. I could see myself using these on future CNC projects. Uh, just anything where you need to join two wires together and you need something better than just one of those crimp on butt connectors. I also want to replace these marker lights that are on the fender. Now these face toward the tow vehicle and these are awesome because this lets you know at nighttime where the edge of your tire is like when you're turning a corner i love these type of marker lights on all of my trailers and i actually have a couple here these are left over from one of my horse trailers that i fixed up years ago so i had these on hand i might as well go ahead and just replace them and put them right here Okay, so I got the bunks removed and they are set up here in the shop on some saw horses. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there is a ton of staples in this carpet, but it seems to come up rather easily with a pair of pliers. So I don't know if I'm going to reuse this board or just go buy two new ones. Uh, I don't know what would be the best to do at this point. It looks like this carpet is coming up rather easy. Let me see what I can do and then take a closer look at these boards. All right, so I got the carpet off of this first board and it was a lot less painful than what I thought it was going to be. It literally just ripped right off of there and the staples, most of them just came up right with the carpet. But after looking at this, the board doesn't seem to be in too bad a shape. There is down there and toward the middle. Uh, it is a little dark where it looks like it may be starting to rot. So two by fours are cheap and I got to go into town anyway tomorrow. So I think I'm just going to remove this hardware and just go buy two new two by fours and put the new carpet on the new two by fours. So I went to my local big box store and I got myself two eight foot two by fours. And there for a while, I thought I was going to have to reuse the old two by fours because I couldn't find two straight boards to save my life there. Um, I did find two eventually that were in halfway decent shape and these are the ones I'm going to use for my new bunk boards. So what I need to do now is measure out where the holes are on those old boards and copy them over to the new boards and then put that bunk uh, carpeting down on top of here and they should be good to go.
So the bunks are on the trailer. That means that this job is complete. You can see here are the new bunks. Here is the axle that I painted. We've got new rubber, new wheel bearings, new wiring, and of course a new winch. There is one thing left to do. I do need to trim this excess length off of the back of the trailer. But before I do this, I'm gonna wait and get the boat up on the trailer. Then I'll know exactly where I need to cut these off because I don't wanna cut them too short. So now that the trailer is finished, let's go over some numbers and find out if this project was worth the time, trouble, and effort that I put into it. So first of all, I did buy the trailer on Facebook Marketplace for $300. Then I bought wire clips for $11.99. The bunk carpet was $38.44. The winch with the strap was $49.85. The wiring harness was $16.99. The bearing kit was $99.98. That's for two of them. And the tires altogether was $193.07. So that makes the grand total that I've got in this trailer $710.32. Now there was a few things that I had on hand and since they were already bought and paid for from another project, I'm not gonna count those into the cost of the trailer. And also if there's anything that you saw in the video that you're interested in buying for yourself, I do have links down in the description of the video for all of those items. So all in all, I saved about $1,300 over a new trailer and I now have a boat trailer that's set up for the mini jet boat. So yeah, I would say that was a pretty good deal. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up, smash that like button. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.